All right, so this part here, we have a trig identity, and we're going to figure out where it comes from. I mean, I could just say, go memorize this thing and, uh, you know, and send you off, but, I mean, what good is it to memorize it if you don't know where the heck it came from or any of that stuff? So um, I will just, first of all, preface this by getting us to open our minds back to grade 8, and we'll think about something for a second here. If I say this, you would say, yes, Mr. B, that is true, okay? And I'd say, okay, that's fine. Okay, what about, um, what if I divided everything by 17? Every term by 17. You would say, well, that's obviously true still, right? Uh, 3 17 plus 1 17 is 4, uh, four 17. What the idea I'm getting you to think about is that this 17 was never there in the equation to begin with, but we stuck it in there. We, we applied a division by 17 to every term, and now the equation looks different. However, it's still true. It's still true. Now that's what I want you to think about when we prove this identity, because we're going to introduce something to something, which we already know, to make it still true. This here, easy grade A stuff, okay? So let's get thinking about that. Of course, in trig, we're dealing with the unit circle. Here's our unit circle. Remember, our distances are one unit away from the center, okay? And our radius is always one. It doesn't matter where it is, okay? It's always one. Not only that, anytime it touches the edge here at point P, whatever you want to call it, it goes straight up to, or straight, sorry, straight up or straight down, oops, not there, uh, straight down to the axis, the x axis, and creates a 90 degree angle, okay? That's golden for us to know. Because they're 90 degree angles, that means we can use the Pythagorean theorem. I had this up from a previous take of this video, it's taken me a few times to finally use the right words. Okay, Pythagorean theorem, because we're dealing with 90 degree triangles anywhere in this, uh, in this identity thing, okay? So now remember, I said 3 plus 1 is 4, but 3 seventeenths plus 1 seventeenth is 4 seventeenths before I added something, okay? Here, any single one of these triangles, because they're Pythagorean theorem, we can use, we, uh, we can go like this. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Because they're all 90 degree triangles, and that's what we're going to think about here. Okay? Well, um, just as the I divided by 17 in the other example, this would also be true if I went like this. A divided by uh, radius squared plus b divided by radius squared equals c divided by radius squared. So what I did is I just, I applied the same division to each of the numbers here, just like the earlier example, okay? So it's still, it's still true. Still with me, it's still true, okay? So this is still a Pythagorean theorem, but how do we get to that? Well, I will show you. First thing, we need to, let's pick a triangle that we know and that we can use to prove this thing. I like a nice easy one. One of my favorites is the 45. Okay? So you only have to really remember one thing. The height is root 2 over 2, and this side here is root 2 over 2. Radius is 1. Okay, so we found this earlier in the earlier videos. Best off to memorize this stuff after you understand how it works. So. What do I have here now? Let's look at this here. If, uh, if this is our axis here, then this, our alpha here, is, is 45, okay? Um, let me see here. Well, um, we could call this side, side A, and this side, side B, and this side, side C. Let's get that out of the road first of all. And now let's see, um, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's C, but it's also the radius, so maybe for now I'll just call it R, since I have an R in there already, okay? doesn't matter what letter you call it, as long as you know what, what's going on with it. Well, um, we know that this is going to be true, because it's simply the Pythagorean theorem, but we've, we've just changed the form of our numbers. So I'm going to replace into this equation what I know from a triangle that we already know off by heart. Um, as I labor with this, okay. Um, a is really root 2 over 2. Okay, divided 
divided by, and r is, is 1, okay? Well, I have to save the time right here. Divided by 1, it just means that that's all it is, that's a. Or, sorry, that's the first term, squared, can't forget that. Plus sign didn't go anywhere. What's next? b, okay, this is b, root 2 over 2, divided by radius, which is 1. Let's be smart about this, don't have to write that. Okay, so, equals, well, c, c, well, I mean, c is, this is c, c is 1, radius is 1, we have 1 over 1 squared. Nice and easy. Substitution, what we just did, this is also another great thing. Nothing to be afraid of. Well, now let's do a little bit of bed mass. So this is something you gotta, you got to know. Uh, exponents, that's the second one. So what do we have here? I'm going to just rip through this real fast now. So that becomes that. Root 2, root 2. It's just one, and what this becomes here is uh, two over four. If you need help with this part, just see me in a separate session. Okay, so uh, yeah, this is true. Um, okay, Mr. B, I'm still waiting. How did you ever get this whole thing? What, what what's the story here? Okay, well, um, I will. Get back in through here, and I'll show you. Okay, maybe I shouldn't have. Maybe I shouldn't have erased this. This is a one here, okay? And that's a one. We're gonna think real carefully here, because we're dealing with this here. Root two over two over one is opposite over hypotenuse. Very carefully. What is that? That is sine of theta. So now that now that we've shown the math that it works, I'm going to erase that and show you the symbology or sim, sim, symbols for it. Opposite over hypotenuse is what we have here. Okay, that's what we that's what we really have. However, opposite over hypotenuse is sine theta squared. That's what that is. Plus sine, plus sine. Root 2 over 1, we're talking about b, right? b over the hypotenuse, that's adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, that is the same as cos squared, oh, cos theta squared. And of course, this side is just is 1. Well, we're almost there. How do we get from there to there? Well, to get from there to there, all it is is a notation difference, meaning that this here is the same as writing this, sine squared alpha plus cos squared. And when I say, I'm going to say theta, not alpha. Okay? So this line here, what we have here going to here, is the same thing, just a different way to write it. You get used to that, okay? But that's how we know to prove this trig identity. We started with what we already know, Pythagorean theorem, divided the terms by the radius or the hypotenuse or C or whatever, and we have our ratios. Opposite over hypotenuse. Well, sine squared. Adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, that's cosine. And of course it's squared leading us to have sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. Okay. Um, yeah, that's basically about it. Uh, send me a holler if you need me to re-clarify that.